Well, hey there, friends. This is Kathy Crow at the Crow Cottage, and today I am having to, um, I had to pre-record this because we have to be gone on Monday, so I am going to um, just pre-record it, and I will be on uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, um, or Wednesday to do the drawing because I, I just didn't have, I didn't want, I wanted to wait and I'm having to do this earlier. So, um, I will do the drawing on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. So anyway, sorry, I'm going to be gone. You're getting this uh, without my common commentary from all of my friends and I'm so sorry, but hopefully they will still comment as we go along. Um, I'm going to use varied vases and everything's backwards. I don't know how to fix that on my camera. <laughs> I can do it on Facebook's live, but I, I don't know how to do it on this. And um, also going to use the, um, or we're not using it. It goes along with this Vibrant Vases. Now, I'm sorry the titles are backwards, but this one is Vibrant Vases. Not using this one. This is our newer one, and I really like it. But um, I really prefer the flowers, I think, on varied vases. Um, the the vases are neater in the next and the other one, but I and these are good too. Uh, I don't know. I like them equally, and uh, it's just a really versatile stamp set. So I I really like it. This is a good one. It's in the main catalog. It's been around for a while, and um, so it's not new. I ca I'm casing a couple of cards. Well, or at least one. This one is a cased one. Um, I forget who did it. If you go on my Pinterest page, you'll see who is the origin originator of this project as far as the color and the design goes. Because the when she did it, um, these embossing folders weren't available. This is the Parisian embossing folder on this. Um, but the first card we're going to do is this one. Okay, so um, let me put the camera down and I will put on my glasses and I hope you can follow along and my camera doesn't get all discombobulated as I move it around. And you can see I've got some things out here already to go. And um, so we will just begin. What I did is I, um, first of all, I made a little template for my stamps because I don't think in this one it matters, but in this one, well, I'm stamping right on it, so it doesn't matter. But if you want to to stamp first and then just punch one time, you can do it if you just make a little template for yourself by punching, punching your stamps one time, and then you can take your, um, let me get these open here for me to use. Ah, oh, I've got some stamped. I've got some already cut out for me, and they're all laying around, all the little tulips and everything because I had my plastic off because I was playing with it. What you can do is, um, let me grab a piece of my DSP. I wanted to use our um, Lily Designer, Lily Impressions Designer Series paper because a lot of us have a bunch of this now from um, Celebration. <laughs> we just finished Celebration. We've got a bunch of this paper. This is a really good one to use. What you can do is just take your... Um, you, uh, take your stamp and stamp right on, um, or use your template is what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see. Let's do it on this one. All right. So if I wanted to cut my, I've got my washi tape on there, uh, which is good because I want it to stick on there. And then I can use my template and then just stamp into the center there. Okay, and then I can do that with each one of these little vases. Just stamping right in there. And this do, this technique doesn't work very well for some things because I've used it, I think I used it for um, one of my tea, Karen and I tried it to try to do it with the snowmen. Um, uh, maybe last year or the year before it could have been I think it wasn't last year's it must have been two years ago and we had a really hard time making this work with the snowman because the idea is is that if you punch if you if you can stamp it in the order that is going to be punched then you only need to punch the one time so let's just see if we can do it. That's the theory, and it works for this stamp set, but I did not have it work. We tried and tried both of us and didn't really have a lot of luck with it with the snowman, but it works really well with this vase. Just get it positioned correctly, and then you can 
punch it out just this one time. And there you go. You have all of your, your little vases uh, stamped really nicely, huh? And I didn't have to take a ton of time to, to punch. You just need to save one of your little templates so that you can do that. So I'm gonna, we're not even gonna use those. I'm gonna move those away. Uh, they are pretty, but I actually want to use this one. And for this card, I don't even really need the outline of the vases. We are just gonna, we're gonna just punch. Yeah, let me punch in an area that I want to punch though, because that's, none of those are gonna work. I don't want the flowers to be upside down at all. Let's trim, I'm gonna trim that off. And probably I'll be able to find, find a combination I like here. I'm gonna just move my punch around until I see that the flowers in the, where they're gonna be in the, on those vases is where I want them. That's pretty, I like that. All right, so we're gonna do that one. And those are the vases we'll use. It is so windy here today. The wind is just oh, really come up. Every time it's windy again, I hope that it will stop, but it doesn't. It keeps going and going. But it has stopped like for one day, but then it starts again. All right, so for this card, I am gonna just do, I did a five and a half by eight and a half and scored it at four and a quarter, just your standard. And this is Calypso Coral. And what we need to do for this beautiful frame is to use the Ornate Layers frame. Now this Ornate Style Suite is available as a whole suite, I think, right now in our catalog. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can buy it individually. I I hope so for your sake, because you might not want the whole suite, but I bought the suite because I loved it all. But, um, you know, anyway, I particularly like all of these pieces. They're, I'm going to have so much fun playing. You're going to see a lot of this over the next year because I'm going to be using it. This is the one I used for today. So I am going to get out our big shot and bring it over. So let me clear a space. It takes a little bit of space. And we will, I need to pull this camera up. And then we'll just cut that out. Let's see how quick and easy it actually is. It's super fast. I do need to, so this frame, the other ones, this one is the one that doesn't cut out as well for me as some. So I'm going to do it through one time, then I am gonna turn it over, just so that that, my, yeah, as you can see, my machine's pretty old. If it was a newer one, it'd probably do better, but it, um, I need that pressure to be applied a little bit differently. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take a piece of paper as a shim. You can see I just used a thin piece. It's not like you need a lot of, a lot there, but just a little extra pressure to make sure that my, um, put that cut out properly because I'm not sure sure if it did. So let before I get everything moved, I'm going to just test it out. Let's see. That part fell out easily enough, which I expected it to. But this, some of the corners haven't been going as well as they should. So I'm just going to, before I take it all the way out, I'm going to just test some of the corners. Make sure that it looks like it did. Looks like it was fine. That shim has always worked for me so far. As my die gets older, it might have a little more trouble. Um, we'll see. We'll just see as we go. Because I, as of yet, have not had enough of an issue to warrant 
um, having to ever buy a new die. But I suppose that is possible, that you might at some point have to do that if it was a die you really liked. By the time it, that would happen, there would you would have already found another die you liked better. I guarantee you, that's been the story of my life. I um, buy these dies and I think, fantastic, it's wonderful, I love it. And then um, I use it a lot. And then after about three or four years, I find that I'm not using it very much because there's another die that I bought in the meantime that I prefer that I think is even prettier. I don't know how they do it, but they just keep making nicer ones. So that is why I don't ever have to buy a die again. Of course, our Stampin' Up! dies, they don't last forever anyway. They're going to retire, and if I really loved it and and thought I needed it, I'd have to go on eBay or something to buy it. And that would be extremely expensive. By the time they hit eBay, they cost way too much. All right, so that is that. I love this set, this ornate. These are, again, this is ornate layers. It's gonna be in the new catalog in June when that comes out. So that's something to be looking forward to. And, we are. I use, I'm going to get my base card out. I also um, cut, I used, um, I used a retired folder. I love this embossing folder. So this is one that if you didn't purchase it last year, I'm so sorry for you. It's Seaside. And um, you could probably find one similar somewhere. Um, it's, it's, um, it's something I'm sure I've seen somewhere. But um, anyway, I just need to cut that down to size. I put it through my embossing machine a while ago, and we need it to be about five and a quarter inches. I want to trim some edge off of both edges. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. This is the side that I want up, so I'm going to turn it upside down. Sometimes my blade uh, kind of tears it and makes it ragged if I cut it on the side that I'm that I'm showing and uh, when I turn it upside down it usually gives it a little cleaner cut so we want to do that one at five and a quarter that seems awfully short let me get my card to make sure that's where I want it um, yeah that's probably about where I want it five and a quarter yeah maybe a little longer I'm gonna go with five and three eighths I think Let's go with five and three eighths. Yes, I think that's better. I don't want as much of that showing as I had if I'd cut it the other way. And now, so for four, and since our card is four and a quarter, normally I would go four inches, but since I fudged a little bit on that other one, I think instead we'll go four and one eighth. And that's Pretty good. Maybe I did want more off on that side. Let's see. We'll go ahead and do it at four inches instead of four eighths. Yep, that's better. I like that better. All right. Oh, so with all of the hoopla all over the world going on with our uh, quarantine issues and all, I have been playing the glad game with myself. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you remember anything about uh, the Disney movies, I grew up watching the Disney movies. They were so great. I loved them. And uh, one of my favorite, I always really liked Haley Mills. She was really fun. I always wanted to have a friend like Haley Mills because I didn't have a... I didn't have a friend that had an English accent, so that was special. And um, she was cute, she was fun. And um, when she was pretty young, Disney did uh, the story of Pollyanna, which you could read a book, you know, of the story of Pollyanna. Um, but I liked the movie, it was a really good one. It had a lot of really good actors and actresses in it. So in it, you know, you re watching that, you realize, huh, you got it pretty good, really. And so I learned from a fairly young age to play the glad game. It's been coming in very handy during this time. 
is every day when I go outside, I can say, thank you, God, for this beautiful day, because it is really beautiful here. It's springtime. So I've got my roses out growing. They aren't blooming, but they're getting buds. I've got clematis that have got really fat buds on them. They are going to be really nice very soon. Let me get my other scissors. Now, these scissors I try to keep nice and not get a bunch of gummy stuff. And you can see I'm putting some big, big, um, uh, poster board tape on here just to, because it's large and I can get a whole bunch of it on here. I'll use my dimensionals for my, my smaller projects, but for this big piece, I'm going to just use this. And, um, the, uh, the, um, we've got really nice bulbs out this year. Last year, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I've tried bulbs in pots before and it didn't work out very well, but I've read enough to know now that most people who do bulbs, they just throw out a lot of those, like the tulips, they throw them away anyway. It's not like they keep them. So, oh, you know what I forgot? Oh, and I've got to get that off because i got to do this part. Oh, now I'm going to have to make sure I tape this in exactly the same place again because um, I've got to emboss this piece. I, I've i got this little tag on here, and I, I want to emboss that. So that's got to go right on this before I tape down. So I've totally ruined that, but as long as I just cover it back up, where I had it. I'm going to peel these off, uh, which I can do with these. Uh, my dimensionals actually stick really good. So if you, if I had to use dimensionals, I wouldn't be able to be peeling them off. They, they stay on good. This stuff, not, not so much. Okay. So that worked out okay. I do want to use this, um, this is another older set. This is Label Me Pretty. It's still available. It comes with this pretty label punch, but we don't need the punch. I just want to use this Thank You for Caring stamp. This is a really good one, um, especially for uh, people right now who might be having people come and do nice things for them. That's a lot of what's happening right now. So I'm placing this so I can see that my words are level with the bottom of my stamp. Because when I turn it over, this one, it's my sticker's off a little bit. It's not exactly the way it should be. And um, if I stamped it the way it looked on here, I'd be stamping it wrong. So I'm going to get out my funny little saw that I've got here because I'm going to put the embossing powder in here. Jeff, my husband Jeff, he... Um, he found, he printed this off for me. <laughs> um, he printed that off for me because I hadn't seen it, I guess. I don't know. I think I did see it a long time ago, but I'd forgotten about it. It's pretty funny. I can relate to it. It's, I can totally relate to it. I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook. Okay, so I want to align the stamp bottom, not the image, with that. So that's the Versa mark. Okay. Oh, I forgot my embossing buddy, but oh wow, I'm just having all kinds of trouble remembering things. And we'll put our white powder on there. Good. It doesn't look like it made a big mess, even though I didn't use my embossing buddy. It looks like it's good. I've got a little bit of Calypso coral there. This is very funny. Um, because I do love bacon. I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist, and um, we don't eat bacon. <laughs> We're vegetarians. And um, when I got married, Jeff said he was going to tempt me by cooking bacon in the backyard and letting the breeze blow it in. And he was just kidding because um, he didn't do that. Okay, so now I'm going to just... Get that melted so we have a nice little sentiment on our card. Thank you for caring. Um, I can't take actual flowers to people very easily right now because of our quarantine issue. I mean, we're not quarantined. I keep saying that, but it's actually just our 
lockdown situation. And um, But I can send nice little cards in the mail, which is what I'm doing. All right, so we'll get the, I'll get my dimensionals out to do this right this time. I want to make sure it stays down after I put that other kind on there. All right. This time we'll keep it on there. I want it to be nice and solid. Once I've once you've ripped stuff off, it it's a, a little iffy in the solid department. So I want to make sure that stays on really good, and I want it to make sure it's opening from the bottom. That'd be the next thing I would do is to stick it on so that it was off there. Okay. All right, very good. Now we're finally back in business. Now, for our flower, we're gonna just stamp right onto that circle. This is a Stitched Shapes die. So, I've already on Whisper White, and let me clean off my stamp. Okay. All right, so this, um, I, I like to, st I'm going to do the, just the, the flowers and then I can put, put the vases right on, you know, top of where they are going. So I'm going to start with the big one, uh, make sure that it gets placed where I want it. My first mark out. Mm. So when I was riding my bike, I've been thinking how glad I am, playing my glad game, how glad I am that the um, streets have been pretty empty. It's been like Twilight Zone, weird, but um, there have been a few people out, but not a ton. All right, we'll put that flower right there. And now my other flowers are going to need to be... I wonder if they're gonna fit, because one of them I had to shorten the stem just a little bit. It's that one. And this one. So I think this one has a nice long stem, but I don't want it to be sticking out the bottom. So I'm going to just stamp this top bit. Okay, let me make sure I've Got everything where we want it. So I, I'm not seeing you guys on the side. Normally I'm looking at the side and seeing what you see and pre-recording this like this is not ideal. I can't really see what's going on here in my, my picture. All right, that flower's done. And then I want the little teeny tiny spray. Actually, it's a pretty long spray, so I have this issue with this one, too. This one has several flowers, but I don't want all of them to fit in there. I want just the top bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just stamp it, and then I'm going to take my, my Simply Chamois and clean off the bottom flower and some of that stem. Okay, now if I've gotten too much of it and there's not enough stem, then I will just have to take my marker and, uh, and, and make it longer. I think that's going to be fine because my vase is going to come here. Okay, I just didn't want flowers sticking right out of the very... I wanted uh, the little stem showing and then some flowers. All right, so that's done. Now this stamp set is so pretty because it comes with um, the little blossoms all ready to just stamp right into your image. And because it's um, photopolymer, you can see right through. Now you can use your stamp apparatus and stamp on there. Um, that might make it easier to do. So let's grab you out, stamp apparatus. I'm going to need the little foam pad that comes with it. I've got, I bought, it, it comes with a plain foam pad that looks like this, but I got the one that has this plasticky stuff on the top. 
I do also have papers so that I can, you know, stamp off if I need to. And it won't get on my pad, but that pad's um, in, uh, got a plastic surface, so it wouldn't even matter. But this just makes it easier to stamp these little blossoms. So instead of using my block, which I can do, I can just position these exactly where I want them. If I can see easily. When I'm doing it all by myself, I can just get my head right over it and it's easier for me to, to position. So we're gonna just hope that I've got it in the right spot. Um, this one is, let's find you. I believe this one's petal pink. Okay, this one's petal pink. And if I don't like what I do, then I can always stamp it again, but it looks pretty good, huh? So that's perfect. All right, so that one is done. And then we're gonna use um, Flirty Flamingo for the other two. Okay, so Flirty Flamingo. This one is this one, and we're going to position that on there. Isn't it that one? I must have it upside down. There we go. All right, let me get my head in here so I can see that I'm getting it exactly right. All right, now I just need to ink up. Oh, I've got water on that. I'm so lucky that didn't drip all over my cardstock. Next time I'll have to be more careful when I'm wiping it. Okay, so we'll just ink up. Well, it doesn't really matter. It can, even if it inks a little bit below there, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, I think my vase will be fine. Now you see I got my blossoms off just a tiny bit, but I'm just not going to worry about it. It's going to have to be fine. If I was doing this again all by myself and I could get my head right over it, then that would not have happened. It's just an issue of where I'm trying to keep my head out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But then that means I'm not able to really get my flowers positioned exactly where I want them but close enough. Now, the my stamps stick to my nails, <laughs> and they stick to my fingers even worse, so I actually prefer using my nails to place them on there, but they do tend to stick to me. All right, last little flower. These are so cute, and I just love the way when you stamp it, how perfectly colored it is. It's just a nice, smooth, even color. And it goes really quick so that you don't have to be coloring. I know some people um, like to color. I love to color myself. I, don't, I prefer to color. But these are so fun to just stamp that it's kind of a nice distraction. All right. Put that aside. I might be using you again, Stamparatus, so we'll just leave you partially out. All right, now all we need to do, we're almost done on this one. We're going to just stick this on, and I do want some dimensionals on the back to get that to stay on. All right, so glad that there aren't any cars on the street. I'm, I'm not happy that things are, that we're all in lockdown. People are out and about. Oops, I did get some water there and there. Huh. Oh well, hopefully my vase will help a little bit. And if not, it's just the way it is. So now we're gonna stick the vases on there. And let's see. I'm very glad that the weather's been nice. It's been beautiful. I think I'm gonna move my vase over just a little bit just because um, of my water spot. I just kind of needed to do that. 
that water spot, I think I'll put a sparkle or something on there to cover that one. Oh, maybe I need this vase over here because I think my fatter vase might might work better there with the flower. I am so I have them different than I did on the other thing. That's the other thing. These vases have lots of different patterns, so you can use stamps to to make the vases look different. Um, there's just so many things you can do with it that look really cool. So um, you can have a lot of fun with it. This this um, these little sequins are pretty fat. So let's put a. Let's find a pretty, hmm, I thought I had coral in here, but I don't, so let's see. What do I have? I know I have something similar in color if I just keep hunting. Where are you guys? Well, the other thing you can do is you can color your, your, bling so if you take a clear one like that i'll stick that right there and then i can take um my flirty flamingo alcohol marker these blending pens the trouble is i've stuck it on there now because i have i have to be careful but you can color these Flirty Flamingo is probably not going to show up very well, but maybe I'll try my darkest Calypso Coral and see if that'll do it. I just don't want to go onto the paper. There. Now it colored it. You can see it colored it uh, Calypso Coral. Pretty, huh? All right, now all we need is our bow, and this one is done. Where did I put my ribbon? There it is. So this is our pretty peacock linen ribbon, and I'm just going to tie that into a bow. I twisted it so that the ribbon is showing the right direction both ways. As I turned it in, as I stuck it in, I turned it so that it would do that. All right, if you don't snug it up too much, it'll lay fairly flat. This is fat ribbon, and the 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 braiding on the side is, is stiff. It's fairly stiff, so if you snug up your ribbon, it's hard to get it to stay on. So I, um, I would recommend just tying it loosely, and I think we'll put a little mini dimensional on there, maybe a couple. get that ribbon to stay and there we go cute 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 I love this little vase set it's so pretty I want to make sure my flowers don't get hidden on that with the with that I think I like that with the little um, with that uh, bling on the sides, kind of cute. All right, so that is that one. And then the next one we're gonna do is this one. This one is all just stamping and it's super fast, super fun. I really like doing this card. So um, it was Christy somebody, I should have gone on just before coming on to see who it was that designed this, because it's, um, it's really pretty. The diagonal look is always really good. So what I did is I took um, uh, Highland Heather and Coastal Cabana and just embossed um, bo embossed both pieces. So when you're you're finished, oh here's one that's hiding that I did back there. <laughs> I got an extra card in there. Um, when so when you're finished then you want to just cut them in in half diagonally you know each piece and then you can make two cards so here's my leftovers i did that one and then i have these left over to do i am gonna need some whisper white for my 
Oh, there we go. I do have one done. I thought I had one done. Let's see why I didn't score it, though, so I'll need to score it. Let's push you guys off to the side. All right. It's nice to have Jeff. I'm very happy uh, having Jeff. His cough is almost completely gone now. The best part news is that he's been able to move back into the bedroom. He's sleeping on a chair all night, you know, most of the nights, um, just because of his cough. He's not had no discomfort or anything. It was fine. It's just a cold. Um, I got over it in just a few days, but he has a very sensitive throat. So um, that cold just lingered as a cough for a couple of weeks, I'm going to say. It seemed like a long time. It's been almost the whole time that we have been inside. So actually, that's been good. He hasn't even been spreading his cough germs around. All right, and it has been so nice to have plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables when I go to the store. I'm so grateful for that. So one of the things that I panic over, okay, I do wanna put a ribbon around these. So since I'm doing that, I need to just create a white um, back background here. And so let me cut that out really quick. We're gonna just do a real quick cut out. So I need to wrap that ribbon around. So we'll go four and a quarters by five and a half. Okay, and then I can I can build off of that piece. And we'll set you a side card. And we're gonna just build off of this one. So let's just glue this down first. Okay, so again, this one is the Parisian. Oh, let me find it. I wonder if it's a big one. Let's see where you are. Parisian. Maybe it's not a big one. Maybe it's down here. I've got my embossing folders separated by size, so my big ones are in a slightly different place. Hmm, maybe did I get it out? No. It must be here and I'm just not seeing you. There you are. The Parisian, Parisian Flourish. It's a beautiful embossing folder. You're gonna love that one. So pretty. It has really nice swirls all over it. I really like it. Now I'm putting a lot of Tombow on here because Embossing folders are hard. Once you've embossed it, there's not a lot of level service to it here. So uh, I usually will put um, um, uh, you know, dimensionals on it. But uh, I've already got dimensionals going on this other part, so I don't want to make it too terribly fat. All right, so there's that. And then this one's gonna go just right up against it. I've had all the, we've had some really big blueberries in the store. They've been so delicious, big, fat. Like they're, they're as big as a tiny plum, <laughs> almost. I mean, that's exaggerating, but they're big. They're really nice. Maybe I should, maybe they're more like a big cherry. Anyway, they're nice. I love those. Okay, so that's that. And I do need, I needed some white anyway, because I have to do this part. So uh, let's just have some fun stamping. Um, oh, where's my ribbon? Let, let me do that before I forget it. I might, if I don't do it. I took, this as um, this is a retired color. You could use Granny Apple Green, which would be very close, um, but I prefer Lemon Lime Twist. Lemon Lime Twist is so bright. I really like it. Um, whoever created this card on Pinterest, that's what she used. It's obvious that she was used. She probably made it a few, I don't know, maybe two or three. Oh my goodness, I didn't cut my <laughs> ribbon long enough. Look at that. <laughs> You're gonna be the smallest. I better go get another piece. That's never going to work. Hold on a sec here. That is hilarious. I have a lot of lemon lime twist. 
I have so much lemon lime twist that I don't mind doing a very, very large piece because, um, so I really overdid it this time just to be sure. Um, I have a lot of it. It's pretty. If anybody wants some lemon lime twist, I, I could probably share some with you. It's nice. It's, um, it's just such a bright color, so it doesn't always go really well with things, but... So actually our granny apple green is a nicer, nicer one, but okay, let's do you about there. So I have enough to work with. Oh good, and I left myself a pretty good piece there. Alright, I just tied it into a nice little knot. Just a nice little gentle knot. Trying to keep that top part of the knot nice and, you know, smooth, like a tie. If you're gonna tie a, a tie for your husband or something, you know, you might wanna do a nice little tie there. Okay, good enough. And let's just trim the edge. All right, now that is done. Now we can have some fun stamping. This is the good part. All right, what I want to start with is are the vases, are the shelf. Um, let's see here. We've got um, two options. There's the outline of the shelf, and then there's the solid. And we're just using the solid. I don't need to have the outline. And I do want to get my Stamparatus out for this because I am not very good at stamping a nice straight line. These photopolymer stamps do twist sometimes and, um, and you can get a really unpleasant little curved thing going when you don't want it. What, what did I do with my... What did I do with you, Stamparatus? I <laughs> thought I had you on the side and I reached over to grab you and now I don't see you. Okay, let me move my, some things out of the way. Obviously, I am not seeing where I put you. And how could I have lost something as large as that? It's not like small or anything. Oh, there you are, okay. All right, so we'll put the card down in here and put the magnet on. Now these magnets are really strong, so if you haven't got this yet, make sure you don't get your magnets together. They, they uh, clink and can break if they hit each other hard enough. And I find I don't get a lot of good stamp image on the by the hinges, and there are things you can do to change that, but to, just to make it easy for me, I just use the grid line, so I'm gonna go with my little logo. It's gonna stay in the corner, and then I'll just use those lines. And that way, if my card shifts, sometimes it does when you're moving things in and out. And I just need a little portion of this card. In fact, it's probably just the bottom of it. I wonder how, what my dimensions actually are. Let's have a little peek. I've got, it looks like a three and, five-eighths by about three and so let's see three and five-eighths yeah so I only need I only need the bottom half so let's readjust let's go this direction okay and then I'm gonna put the shelf down like right down here so I've, I want to leave plenty of room for my flowers, just to make sure. There, all right. I'll use this line as a as a leveler so that I can get that level. And we want Highland Heather for our shelf. Mm. Okay, where's the stamp case? Let's put this guy under here. Oh, that's too fat. Let's try a block. But your block is the right height. No, not quite. It's a little fat too. Actually, our stamp cases are perfect. So let me get that label 
stamp case out. We'll stick that. There we go. Now that's perfect. And I can ink you up. Hopefully without inking up everything. There's our shelf. Then it's easier to position your your um, your vases once you've got you know your your stamp is holding everything there. All right, put you away. We're gonna do. Let me stick my card here so I can see what we're doing. We're gonna do this one. Actually, let's. Yeah, let's work from the side. We'll work from the side. So I'm just using the solid ones. They act, They have uh, an outline and a solid, and then they have some decorated ones too. Again, this is the uh, Varied Vases set. So we're going to stick you on the shelf right here. And I need some lemon lime twist. And if you used Granny Apple Green, which would work just as well, you'd need to stamp off probably at least once, maybe two times to get this hue. Um, that's what this is. This is basically your Granny Apple Green stamped off a couple of times. Okay, so that one and then we're going to do the tall one next. Okay, so we want the, oops, that's the outlined one. I don't want the outlined, I want the solid one. And it's kind of, they look cool going in and into each other. They look really good that way. This one's um, Coastal Cabana. Okay, Coastal Cabana. Pretty. Love that. And then we're going to do the Highland Heather again. Little, little round one. Oh, not the, just all solid. Because you want this to look like clear glass that they can, you know, you're seeing through. One's behind another. You can't really necessarily tell which, which is behind and which is in front. I followed the um, Christie's pattern as far as the color of this per exactly because I really like it it's pretty now see I got it up a little bit but it doesn't even matter it's fine um, it would have been nicer if I'd got it right on the shelf but again if I'm look working it by myself it's a lot easier because I can get my head right over <laughs> everything and make sure it's where I want it to be and when I'm working on away from the camera here it makes it a little harder all right green green but uh, lemon lime twist that's what that is so sorry that one's gone it, it was an in color a few years ago and um and i really liked it so i bought a bunch of it because i knew it would go you know and then once it's gone it's gone and um, it's a color i like to use so i've got a lot of leftover paper and um ribbon obviously and cardstock of lemon lime twist so I am all set to go all right very cute so even though I've got some floater vases there it still looks pretty good and we're gonna keep these ink pads out so now I need to do the flowers so we're sticking this big flower in to this vase Okay, and then we're going to use some memento, tuxedo black memento, and ink that up. Oops, hopefully I didn't over ink. Good, it's fine. This is a new ink pad, so it's kind of juicy. And just using the same color um, flower combinations. There are other flowers in this set, but I just, these are the ones I like. The, um, the other ones are really pretty too, but they're more upright. And these have a nice little drape to them. 
Like this is an orchid that I just did, right? I think it looks like an orchid. This, I'm not really sure what this one is. Now this is, I'm gonna have to do this, the same thing with this one and not ink up the whole um, stem because it's way too long. I don't want it to be that long. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now the trick is to just make sure I'm only inking where I want it to be inked. And then let's wipe off a little of that. I think I got too much on there. Okay. Oh, I didn't get enough on there. Let's get a little more on there. Maybe I had it exactly right. Okay, there we go. That's better. Cute. And last flower to go. That one, I don't know what that is. It looks like an anemone almost. This one's going right here. I'll have to move my magnet. It's in the way a bit. And I have no idea what this one is either. And I know my flowers, but I don't really know what that is. All right, so the flowers are done, but we can still use the same little technique to do all of the, the inking part. Now I'm gonna get my head in here because I do not want this to get all flubbed up. So you'll have to bear with me here. I'm gonna put my camera up so that I can stick my head right in here. And that way I can get, hopefully, I'll get my flowers colored the way I want them. Okay, we're gonna do this one with lemon lime. It's so pretty. Doesn't it look better when it goes inside the outlines? And then the little these could be poppies. If I colored them differently, they could be poppies. But when they're blue like this, I guess there is a Himalayan blue poppy. Uh, Mechanep Mechanepsis? Mechanopsis? Something like that. I've never seen it. I've wanted to have one, but it grows in cool conditions, it says in the catalog. It's, it looks absolutely beautiful in the catalog, but... I've never seen one in real life. And then this purple's good for an orchid. Or an orchid could be, they can be any color. They come in all kinds of colors. In fact, lots of multicolors. I did see some geraniums down at um, Fred Meyer this morning. That was nice to see the see some normality out and about. The nurseries haven't quite given up on people buying plants, so that's good. So I got some fuchsia, fuchsia, little fuchsia starts. And um, I'll have to take those in and out at night, though, because they can still freeze. But if I don't get them now, the best ones will be picked over. So I got grabbed them while they were there. Usually the best ones go pretty quick. All right. Birthday Wishes goes on the corner, and it's going to just be in black. I guess that's good right there. I could do it in a color, but there we go. So cute. So this is how you, oh, I didn't do the outlines of the bottles. It actually looks pretty cool even like that. Now, if I had um, not had my Stamparatus all set up, that would be a disastrous mistake because I'd be having a hard time going over all of those outlines. But, because I did it with the Stamparatus, we are all good. good. I'm just putting away my ink pads. All right. Oh, I got some black on my ribbon. Oh, well. It's nice to see. I have been very glad that their gas prices have been going down. That is a nice surprise for all of the oddness of life right now, isn't it? All right, let's do this one. Oh, I shouldn't have put away my black, but I've got another one. 
I better get my head in here again. I want to, I want to get this perfect because I don't want to screw up my card now. I've already got a lot of work into it here. Hmm, it looks slightly crooked, and it was. <laughs> better off with my usual method of just sticking it on. Let's give the next one a try like that. I might even try to correct this guy. Now I did it again in almost exactly the same place. I think it's because of my angle. I'm looking at it from this direction down. I'm not looking at it straight down. So please forgive me. I am not going to keep, be able to do it perfectly, apparently. Let's try this one just for fun. Let's see if I can do better with this block. Ah, I might be able to just do better with the block. Let's see. These faces are actually really pretty forgiving. I keep wiping it off. I don't know why. It's just black. So you don't even need this damp apparatus. You can see right through them. It's pretty easy to do, but um, in normal conditions, this damp apparatus would actually be working better than it did on that one. That was the operator error. There we go. All right, let's put you away. And we'll put our magnets away. All right. Oh, we I am glad we have our our forsythia is done. But we have um, all of our flowering trees are blooming except for the dogwood. We do have one little dogwood. No, we don't. Do we have that dogwood out there still? No, the dogwood's gone. I think it died. <laughs> I have so many plants, I don't even remember what I have. I think our dogwood is dead. It is. It's gone. So we don't even have the dogwood. I don't have to worry about it. It's gone. Other than that, so we have a flowering cherry. Um, it's a white one. Mount Fuji. We have um, a flowering... Um, oh, um... Almond. And that's a very light pink. And then we have a flowering crab apple, which our state would actually pay us to remove if I ever want it out. It's kind of nice to know in case I ever do want it out. Um, it's pretty though. The bees love it. It's nice to see the bees all over everything. Now I'm cutting this a little smaller than my original, it looks like. I'm not really worrying about the measurements. It doesn't really matter that much. Actually, looking at it now, it looks... A little bigger. Isn't that funny? I thought I was cutting it smaller. I definitely don't want it bigger. So let's trim trim that side. I could have I could have stood it being a little shorter even. So we'll just shorten it up. Oh, I don't want to put that away because I want to use my um oh where are you? There you go. Lemon lime. I need this lemon lime. We want a tiny edge on that, so I'm probably going to just use my scissors to trim it. We'll see. Sometimes my trimmer, when I'm using the big trimmer, I have a hard time getting a teeny tiny edge. I want a really slim edge, edge on this one. So I think we'll just... Use the scissors. And it might not be perfectly straight, but it's close enough. And that's going to go on there with our dimensionals, and it will be done. Isn't that cute? So I hope you like this set. I do think I want to put some things in the center there. You can put little gems in the center. That looks really cute. Um, I've seen that people do that with these flowers, little tiny rhinestones. It looks cute. 
this is just a nice springy card. I thought it was perfect for all the flowers. We've got a lot of nice bulbs in the flowering. Uh, oh, our Daphne is actually out. And that's a fairly new plant, so I'm gonna separate my ribbon a little. So I wanna see that, see that there's two, two parts to my ribbon. No, I don't think I want it under. Let's just do it like that. Once you get those dimensionals on there, it's on. It's permanently on, you're done. I am so glad our irrigation went on without a glitch because some years I have to call the guy out and have him open up our valves because our valve for some reason, you know, is stuck. And it's all he does is he twists it. I just never remember how he twists it. I don't know how to do it. And I'm afraid I'll hurt my valve. And they're like $1,000 each, so I don't want to mess around with it. And uh, it's annoying because then I have to wait for days. And while I'm waiting for the irrigation man, that just means I'm out there watering by hand for a couple of hours a day or every other day. So I prayed as I opened each valve up for the sprinklers this year, please let it open. And they did, so I'm very happy about that. It's been nice to have so many good long chats with our friends and our kids especially. I um, don't have to worry about their work schedules right now, so I feel fairly free to call them when I want to. And that's been nice. Now, I did have a white edge on this, but my white edge isn't really showing. Um, so now I think I'm going to need to take it off. I did kind of prefer it with that white edge, but oh well, it's fine. And so I think that is it. So those are the cards we did today. And I am so sorry that I wasn't able to be online with you live, but I hope that you enjoyed this time with me anyway. And I'm gonna put my camera up and see what I can see. <laughs> All right, so you guys have a wonderful week. I will, but I will be back tomorrow. I will be back to do my drawing to see who won the drawing for sharing. And when I put this video on, please share. Even though it's not a Facebook Live one, it still should work. Hopefully I'll get it on all right. And uh, you guys have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Um, I'm not gonna even repeat all the stuff we've been repeating because we all know what we need to do. Let's just do it and it's not gonna be that bad and soon it will be over. Um, pray that businesses will be able to open up again as usual. All right, thank you again so much, and I will see you later. Bye.